It starts from Brest, France this Sunday, the ultimate race around the world, by 6, 32-metre, 105-foot, Ultim Trimorans. Like the Von D Globe, it is a solo skippered, non-stop race around the world, in these foiling, massive beasts. Solo, you can tame a 60-foot Amoka, but the 32 by 25 meter, 105 by 75 foot, giants is another thing. Imagine sailing Comanche by yourself. And it's bigger than that, as six French super sailors will attempt this, the hardest race in sailing. We wish them the best and we will come of the race over the coming days. This is your weekly Global Sailing Highlights show, The World on Water, for January 5, 2024. Welcome to our 14th year of producing these weekly programs. Five of the six trimarans are in the starting base in Brest, and the missing yacht, SVL Lazatigue, is busy with late boat work, and was put back in the water yesterday, and is on its way to join the rest of the fleet for Sunday's start. Il y a à partir d'ici, soir c'était pas déconnant quoi mmh. comme planning c'était presque jouable j'étais limite optimiste ce matin euh, je te dis on se prend une semaine dans la gueule après enfin tu vois le call de lundi ça a été clair c'est en attaque mmh. voilà donc euh, avec en attaque avec toutes les incertitudes que l'on a c'est pas une petite réparation donc euh, c'est voilà c'est en somme toute c'est pas très compliqué mais c'est des grosses pièces à venir assembler à venir coller il euh, y a beaucoup de kilos et beaucoup de mètres carrés de carbone à mettre donc c'est du temps c'est forcément du temps qui est très peu compressible si on veut pouvoir quand même faire une réparation structurelle ça reste le bras avant qui est une des pièces les plus chargées du bateau donc il faut pas faire n'importe quoi
The 2023 Melbourne to Hobart Yacht Race started in sunny conditions on Port Phillip Bay, with competitors set for a quick race to Hobart. The fleet started the 51st race in a steady 13 knot southerly breeze under blue skies, but an eerie sea fog rolling over Point Nepean enveloped the boats soon after the start, reducing visibility for competitors and crews alike. Alien has won the record breaking fourth Heemskirk Perpetual Trophy and Peccadillo smashed the multi-hull record in the 2023 Melbourne to Hobart yacht race. After a gruelling last 24 hours of sailing, in winds gusting greater than 40 knots and battling 4 to 5 metre seas along the south coast of Tasmania, Alien, skippered by Justin Brennan, from the Royal Yacht Club of Victoria, was victorious in the intense battle for the prestigious Heemskirk Perpetual Trophy, while the multi-hull Peccadillo took line honours in the 51st Melbourne to Hobart yacht race. Justin Brennan and his seasoned ocean racing crew flew under the radar for the first part of the race but positioned themselves well for the final run home to Hobart to win the coveted Heemskirk Perpetual Trophy for the overall winner determined on AMS Handicap. The modest skipper and his crew sailed alien into the record books by winning the Melbourne to Hobart yacht race, West Coaster, on AMS Handicap for the fourth time, a record that will take a long time to beat. Brennan also won the Melbourne to Hobart East Coaster race in 2008. The battle for AMS honours was on in earnest on the second day of sailing, with Ryujin, skippered by Alex Toomey, last year's runner-up Jinnan, skippered by Nigel Jones and Cam McKenzie, and Lord Jiminy, skippered by Jimmy Oosterweggle, primed for a three-way battle for the AMS win, but three-time winner Alien picked up speed overnight and had a great race into Hobart. We are sailing only media. Please subscribe, share, like, and check the alerts bell. Euh, je m'appelle Marie Morgan Ledin, et euh, je suis une cycliste professionnelle dans la formation Arkea BNB Hotel. Une première découverte et c'est vrai que ça nous change un peu de, de ce qu'on voit habituellement au bord de route, mais très sympa d'être là. La caractéristique de leur bateau, c'est que bah, comme nous, je pense que c'est optimisé, que ce soit le poids et l'aérodynamisme, donc euh, ça se rapproche et euh, c'est vrai que ça fait un peu la beauté du sport. C'est pas la première fois, mais c'est toujours aussi imposant euh, d'arriver devant la taille des bateaux. Ouais. Sur tout ce qui est euh, technologie, tout, toute l'évolution des bateaux, euh, il voilà, y, y a de la recherche derrière pour ça. Ça reste un événement sportif aussi euh, pour, euh, pour les mecs qui pilotent. Le mode de vie entre guillemets qu'ils peuvent avoir euh, entre, entre chaque course, euh, voilà, tout ça, et je trouve ça intéressant, ouais, euh, en tout cas comme approche. Ouais. Steve Mounier, attaquant international béninois, attaquant du stade brestois depuis 2020. C'est la première fois et je suis vraiment impressionné. Je voyais ça à la télé et je n'imaginais pas qu'ils étaient aussi grands. S'imaginer qu'il y a des hommes en solitaire qui manœuvrent de tels engins, je trouve ça exceptionnel. Pour faire ce, ce sport, la voile, et faire des tours du monde ou bien des, des traversées, il faut avoir un mental vraiment d'acier. Et dans le foot, c'est assez pareil. On a besoin aussi d'un gros mental pour pouvoir surmonter tout ce qui se passe dans notre carrière. Et secrètement, dans ma tête, je rêverais bien de faire un tour du monde aussi en bateau un jour. Alive, owned by Philip Turner, and skippered by Duncan Hine, is the 2023 overall winner of the Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. The Reichel Pew 66 arrived in Hobart on 28 December at 3.19 and 4 seconds p.m. to become only the second Tasmanian boat to have their name inscribed on the legendary Tattersall Cup, not once, but twice. Focus, tenacity and well-honed intuition determine the overall winner of the 78th Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. 103 boats face the renowned 628 nautical mile quest, but only one would etch its name on the prestigious Tattersall Cup, every competitive sailor's dream. The Tattersall's Cup is very hard to win because so much has to come together. It's very hard because it's on handicap, which means you really have to have a boat capable of competing with the big boats. It's earned a reputation because it is such a difficult and amazing race. At 10am local time, Tasmanian Boat Alive, skippered by Duncan Hine, was awarded the coveted 
Tattersall Cup for the fastest boat on corrected time. It's uh, great, great to have uh, just won the Rolex Sydney and Hobart yacht race uh, second time and being a Tasmanian boat uh, to boot, it's a wonderful sensation. It's, uh, you know, life doesn't really get much better. Unpredictable and intense conditions throughout the race provided timely opportunities for three yachts. Moneypenny, Alive and URM Group to forge ahead of the fleet. The challenge this year has is, is really been the weather in general, which is, which is what sailing is about. One of the hardest things about this year was knowing what was going to happen because we've had a lot of unsettled weather on the eastern seaboard. I always knew that we needed to be south of the other competitors. I really wanted to make sure we were on top of the left shift that was coming, so that front that was coming through. The Tasmanian boat alive with the expert navigation skills of Adrian Carlin executed a flawless race strategy, making the most of what the weather threw at them. We pushed our boat pretty hard this race. It was fairly rough conditions. And then at the end, we all know that anything can happen in the, in the Derwent. The Derwent is fickle and um, unfortunately this time it didn't work out for us. We stopped and they came in doing 20 knots at the mark while we were doing eight knots. Alive came in ahead of URM Group, claiming its second Tattersall Cup on the 75th anniversary of the last double handicap win by a Tasmanian yacht. Last week was a very busy week on the Swan River Perth and the crew at Ironbark Photos were working overtime filming all the regattas. Here is a sample of their work. It was the invitation race for the 2023 Mirror Nationals, being hosted by the Royal Freshwater Bay Yacht Club. The brisk sea breeze got the mirrors onto the plane, making for very enjoyable racing. What a difference a day makes. Today there was a strong sea breeze gusting up to 20 knots on the Swan River, for day two, of the Skate Nationals. There was plenty of speedy spinnaker action, and the planks had quite a workout upwind, to keep the boats upright. Day one race one of the Cherub Nationals was sailed on the Swan River Perth. It was perfect weather conditions for the Cherubs, bright sunshine and a 15 to 20 knot easterly breeze enabling the course to be set straight across the river. The crews were eager to get off to a good start, and they didn't disappoint with exciting spinnaker rides everywhere. The world's best lightweight men windsurfer LT riders raced off against each other over the short slalom course, set right in front of the South of Perth Yacht Club. There was furious action, with a big crowd watching on the shore. The 78th Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race will go down in history as a relentlessly demanding test of determination, as well as physical and mental resilience. The record will highlight a tooth and nail fight to the finish for line honours, and a Tasmanian boat joining the select few to have achieved two overall wins in the events near eight decades.
With a reputation that has long transcended yachting's traditional frontiers, this year's Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race proved once again to be a true test of human endeavour. As this 78th edition comes to an end, competitors are left with a sense of achievement and a lifetime of memories from one of the greatest editions so far. The start is amazing. There's all these boats around and it's on national television. It was such an incredible opportunity and experience, a brilliant, brilliant moment. Then you go out into these beautiful waters that we have off the east coast of Australia. Most people be just trying to head south, they're just getting down towards the island as quickly as possible before the next front comes through. For the first time in all of the Hobarts I've done, 90% of it was upwind, which made it really challenging. So the weather was intense. Mother Nature always throws a little curveball in there just to keep it interesting. We had a lot of these small, uh, low pressure turning around with a lot of uh, thunder, rain. Offshore racing is unique because of this opportunity to pit yourself against nature and do it with other people. There's, there's lots of layers to offshore yachting. It's about a connection with nature. It's also a connection with your inner self. I did a couple of fast nets and Atlantic crossings and I found the particular the last two days very, very harsh. And this morning almost in survival bowlers. We were seeing 45 knots and some big seas. We had a really, really great race. It was tough. We saw 54 knots. Really great to get to the finish and have this amazing experience of all these people cheering us on and, and uh, so supportive, which is awesome. For many of the 103 yachts that started the race, crossing the finish line in Hobart is an exceptional achievement in itself. If my mission is completed, I finish the Sydney Hobart race. But there's all these things that spiritually happen to you when you race, and you do that with other humans. It's just achievement, personal endeavour. For those competitive boats, sought after prizes are awarded for standout performances. And most importantly, the Tattersall Cup awarded to the race's overall winner. This year, presented to Tasmanian Boat Alive. Yet another unforgettable edition of the Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. A demanding test of determination, focus and endurance.